Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. This video is primarily going to be useful for new players, not so much for end game players. <laughs> Let's just start in the story. But anyway, if you are new to this channel, I welcome you over to my channel. We are quite a humble place. We try our best to learn the game and be the most effective and efficient with our resources. And that's generally the rule of thumb uh, pertaining to the videos that I release in my channel. So if that's something that you might like, then feel free to stick around and subscribe if you have not already done so. But let's just get right into today's content immediately. Okay, so we are going to talk a little bit more about how we can maximize our early game, primarily focusing more on the first 10 days of your active time playing here, completely free to play. So let me just show you that I can confirm with you that this account that I have right now, this is my alternate account that I just created about like less than 10 days ago. Uh, there is completely no expenses done. So shopping Fiesta, I have not even spent a single dollar and this is the proof that I have not actually done so. But anyway, so for this video, I'm going to show you every single step that I took in order to obtain 350 summons within the first 10 days of you playing this game. And the reason why that is so important is because you need to be able to obtain 350 summons in order to get many free legendary summons. And I'll explain that a lot, uh, as we progress through this video. Now, at the start of the game, very early on, one of the first few experts you're going to obtain is going to be Mona. Okay, so Mona is an archer asper that excels in massive AoE damage. Okay, so she does a lot of AoE attacks and she will be your main Sonic Rift farmer. And you might be wondering, what the hell is Sonic Rift? I, I completely understand. Okay, so Sonic Rift is for the most part going to be the only way for you to farm EXP. It doesn't matter whether you're at the start or are you at like the end game, right? This is going to be the primary place for you to farm EXP. And for early and mid game players, this is also going to be a place for you to farm gold because each of these runs gives you about, I think about 16,000 gold per piece, I mean per, per win, which is going to amount to a lot of gold. And gold and EXP are the two most important things at the start. Not relics, or rather not equipments, okay? The gold and your EXP is more important than equipments at the early game. Now, soon after you obtain Mona, you will eventually have enough summons to uh, to get Liling or Tang Xuan. These are the two beginner espers in the beginner banner. Now, there is a lot of heated debate between who is the better starter esper for you to luck out on. Is it either going to be Liling or is it going to be Tang Xuan? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter at all. Right now, I do feel like maybe Tang Xuan surpasses Liling a little bit in the end game. But for the most part, it does not matter because you're going to get both of them eventually. And either of these two new espers are going to work really well with not just your Mona, but also the Jiangman that you're going to get very early on in, uh, as you progress through the game. And primarily at chapter 1-13 when you unlock the novice support, this is the place for you to select Jiangman as your select esper. And the reason for that is because Jiangman is one of the best espers to be used in the story content. And the reason why you want to do story, I'll talk about in just a little bit. So now that we're talking a little bit more about the summons, the goal is to summon 350 times, like I said at the start of this video. So do not refill, just use all your currency to buy summons because within these 10 days, it is very important for you to channel all your resources into summons to maximize the amount of summons that you can have and to achieve 350 at the start so that you can get an extra free legendary esper, like essentially without any cost whatsoever, right? Just playing the game and playing effectively and that's going to give you two free legendary aspects, one at I think 150 and the other at 350 summons. That is the main goal for the first 10 days of your gaming. Now next up, Changpu is actually one of the one of the best aspects that you can obtain at the start for free. So as you're summoning, you're bound to obtain a couple of her copies. And the reason why she's so good is she actually has a very big heal on her third skill, which also provides immunity if you have her ascended at uh, level 3, phase 3, right? But I didn't do so because I got a better healer uh, halfway through. If not, I would have totally uh, ascended her to ascension 3. And apart from her third skill being a really good heal, she also has a second skill that heals as well. So she has two heals on her kit. And both of these healing skills have very, very short cooldowns, which is amazing. This is so helpful for new players. You're going to have a lot of healing uptime and you're going to keep your entire team safe. So that's the most important part. And the immunity that she gets at Ascension 3 is amazing for Kronos as well. It's one of the Ritual Miracle bosses that you will face eventually and she's going to help you a lot in that sense. Alright, so now let's talk a little bit more about the story and why I highly recommend you to focus the most of your resources, the most of your time into the story itself. And the reason for that is every single one of these nodes that you partake in, like, like let's say I'm currently at chapter 10 in the Purgatory difficulty. So there are like several difficulties. Purgatory is the second hardest. So as you can see, every single one of these nodes is going to provide me with 40 Nexus Crystals. And this is a lot because you're going to add on 
every single one of these sub notes as well. So in total, there are 16 notes here. So 16 times 40 Nexus Crystals. That's the amount of Nexus Crystals that we can obtain just by clearing this. And of course, on top of that, there is the star, requ uh, the star requirements completion as well, which gives you another 150 Nexus Crystals and a summon on top of that. And of course, there is also the chapter clear reward, which sometimes do provide you with like extra Nexus, uh, extra summons, for example, like in this case, right? Chapter 9 gives you extra gold records. So this is going to be the best place for you to farm a lot of currency for you to convert it into gold records in order to achieve 350 summons at the start. So moving on, we need to talk more about the aspects that are really good for the story because like I said, this is going to be the primary goal for you. So there are three main base uh, epic aspects that are really, really good. So the first is going to be Lomian because he has the speed lead and this allows your entire team to be super fast at the start. You don't need to worry too much about getting extra speed from your equipments, which is very hard to come by at the beginning. And not only that, he has a 100% proc chance to land, to land freezes on his third skill, which has a cooldown of 4 turns, and his second skill has a good chance of reducing the enemy's AP and landing slows at Ascension 3, with a really short cooldown of 3 turns as well. So he is very effective in control, but another expert that is, I think, a little bit better is going to be Pritzker. Although Pritzker lacks a universal speed lead, this is only applicable in like club battles. So this is not going to take effect in your story at all, but he has a pretty good stunning uptime on his third skill, which also resets the enemy's cooldowns as well. And the cooldown reset actually comes from his passive over here, and he also has a first skill that not only absorbs AP, but also inflicts stun at Ascension 3, which is where I have him right now. So he's probably one of the best controllers in the game, and especially so for the early game. And now the third and final expert that's really good for clearing the story is going to be the free expert Xiangman that I talked about at the, uh, towards the start of this video. And the reason why she's so good is because of the Nether Bloom debuffs that she has that is effectively going to, to double as not just a really good damage source, but also a place for you to apply this Silence debuff, which is also another kind of control. So this is very handy, especially in dealing with some of the enemies in the tower content, especially some of the bosses in the tower content. I think she has a lot of value in these areas. And I have two more experts to add on to the list because within the first five days, you're going to unlock both the Red Twin and the White Twin. So these are the two experts here. And the reason why they are so good it's because you have to use them together at the start to maximize their utility. So for example, for either of the red twin or the white twin, you can use their third skill and that will actually call the other twin to attack as well with their corresponding third skill, which is insane because this is a lot of extra DPS. This is a lot of extra AP control. There's a lot of extra stuff in this kit. And of course, if you take a look at their second skill as well, if the other twin is present, this actually attacks two more times, dealing more AOE stuns. And the same is also true for the Black Twin who does more AoE slows on his second skill. So all in all, the Twins are amazing when used together and they are going to help you clear a lot of content super fast. So I highly recommend it as well. Alright, now some of you guys might also ask, what if I lucked out on some of the Legendary Aspers and you do not know whether you should be using those Aspers in your lineup instead? What I can say is to refer to one of my Legendary tier lists which I done just like maybe a month ago. That is going to give you an idea of whether those legendaries are going to be good for you or not. And I did break it down to explain in greater detail on every single one of those experts. So go ahead and check it out if you have not already done so. And if you are wondering about a billion months because those are very expensive material for you to, uh, to level up the skills of your legendary experts, for example, like my Clara here, right? I've fully upgraded her third skill. If you're wondering about Abilimons, I also have an Abilimon tier list that you can refer to so that you can figure out whether does it make sense for you to skill up Clara as opposed to skilling up Ahmed, for example. And I can guarantee you that skilling up Clara is going to be a better choice, which is why if you take a look at that Ability Mon tier list, she is one of the highest rated as well over there. Now, in furtherance to all of this, one important thing about team building that you should know is the speed order. So it's very important for you to swap your Aspers around, especially when they have the exact same speed. Because if they do have the exact same speed, the Asper that is on the left is always going to move first. So it's very important that you know exactly who is supposed to move first so that you know how to arrange them accordingly. Now, next up, the Cube Miracle is a must farm location because it gives you summons, it gives you skill ups, it gives you a lot of free materials. So let's take a look at the Cube Shop, for example, over here. It gives you Go Records, it gives you a bunch of Elemental Records, it gives you the, the Twins Ripples, which allows you to summon more of the Twins. And it gives you the very important epic ability mon as well and the rare ability mon. I don't I wouldn't recommend you to buy the rare ability mon here. You should buy it from the gold shop instead for 150k a piece. Uh, but of course on top of that there is also the rare star mon which can be quite useful for the early game. Now next, make sure that you equip your aspers 
with full sets, right? So make sure that you have the full wall set, you have the full wind set, you have the full growth set. Just make sure that you complete the set. This is more important than having a proper main set at the start of the game because that set bonus effect is going to be very, very massive and you do not want to pass up on that. So try your best to make sure that you complete the sets for all of your espers in your team. And I also wouldn't really recommend you to farm Kronos at this point of time because I, I have not farmed Kronos at all. So the only extent that I would suggest for you to do for Kronos is to just grind out the daily multiplier rewards and that's about it. So as you can see here, I do farm Kronos three times every day at the highest difficulty that I can manage right now, which is currently difficulty 12 or rather difficulty 11. I'm currently stuck at 11 and just do this three times a day and that's about it. Done. You don't really think too much about having good equipment at the start of the game. It's really not important. Stats from your levels matter a lot more than stats from your equipments because the equipments are going to be based on the on your base stats which is based on your levels. So levels are the most important thing. Now after breezing through the easy difficulty, you will unlock the hard difficulty after beating chapter 4 of the easy mode. And that is very important because that also gives you the same amount of free nexus crystals and summons throughout this entire story grinding process. So from easy mode, you're going to go to hard mode and you're going to go to purgatory difficulty and eventually hell difficulty. But I think hell is definitely way beyond the early game and it's not even a place that I have achieved thus far in my current alt, so I wouldn't recommend it for you guys. And when you're running low on stamina, don't fret because there is also the special tower for you to farm more resources. So let's check this out. So if you go to adventure, you go to infinite miracle, I'm currently on floor 79 of the spatial tower and this is like within 10 days. So within 2 weeks, you should be able to beat the entire spatial tower if you play the game perfectly and you follow the rules that I have set out in this video itself. And the reason why clearing this is so important is because each of these floors that you clear is actually going to give you 50 nexus crystals on all of the off floors. And by the off floors, I mean floor 1 to 4 and floor 6 to 9. And of course that repeats every 10 floors. But each of the 5th floor would give you a free gold record and each of the 10th floor will give you something a little bit more impressive. So in this case right now, I'm going to get a Shimmer record which gives me a Shimmer Attuned Asper. But for example, for floor 70, this gives you a Legendary Abilimon and for floor 60, blah blah blah, you can just check out the rewards page over here. A lot of free gold records along the way. So a lot of summons over here which you should not pass up on. So definitely try to farm the Spatial Tower whenever you can, whenever you're running low on your stamina. Now, player level 30 is probably like the biggest jump for you guys. And the reason for that is because this allows you to get your Aspers to Ascension 3 because your, your highest level cap is going to be pushed to level 35. So when you reach level 35, for example, right, if you go to Ascensions, you will notice that the third Ascension is locked behind being level 35. Okay, maybe this is not the best example. Let's, let's take a look at Sender here, right? So in order for you to unlock the third Ascension, which improves their skill, you need to be level 35. Or rather, your Esper needs to be level 35, which means that your player level needs to be at least level 30. So hitting level 30 is very important so that you can unlock the third ascension. And I think the best choice for you to, f to get the third ascension at the start is definitely going to be Tiangman. And the reason for that is this significantly improves her third skill from just dealing damage to now inflicting Nether Bloom onto all enemies, which is insane. This is massive DPS and massive control. So at this point, you kind of understand the basics of the game. So all you really need to do is to just focus on your story, focus on your special tower, and that's it. Like these are the locations where you need to, to prioritize all your stamina and all your effort at. But apart from these two content, if let's say you're stuck at both the story and special tower, then what I can recommend you is to just farm Sonic Rift for a little bit just to get your aspers up to speed on their levels. And the most important levels should go to your main story clearing team. So for example, my main story clearing team looks something like this right now. I have a bunch of 6-star aspers. I have just focused everything into these aspers. So number one, I have both the twins, right? As you can see here, both the twins are going to be essential. I have Pritzker here as well. And I have Jiangman who is exceptional. This team is so freaking powerful and that's it. And of course, if you do not have a Clara, you can always use Changpu. Or if not, you can also opt for Hengre, who is also, she also costs like a dollar. She's in one of the packs. That is if you are willing to spend. If you're not willing to spend, Changpu is still really good. Hengre, you can still summon for her. It's gonna be fine. I do have an extra copy of Hengre as well. So this is just the main dance, right? You do your story, you do your special tower, and then you do your Sonic Rift if you need the extra EXP to grind. Rinse and repeat, and that's about it. So as you can see, let's go back to the echo where we started this video's topic, right? Which is having 350 summons. And I do have 350 summons right now. And as you can see, I still have another two days. This is technically two more days left in this current echo event. 
which means that within a span of eight days completely free to play i was able to achieve uh, the 350 mark which grants me an extra legendary expert this way which is perfect so this is the goal oh my apologies it's level 100 and level 350 not 150 so this is the goal for most of you guys. Apart from that, if you're a bit of a will, then these few are going to matter a lot more for you. But for free to play players, this is it. Like this is literally it. So let's just do it. Let's do a 10 summon. Hopefully you get something good here. We got a legendary Esper as well. Oh my God. So we got two legendary Espers within this actual showcase. Super insane. Oh my God. Fantastic stuff. Super hype. Who's it going to be? Oh, Tien. Nice. Okay, good. Uh, Universal 20... 20... 20 25% speed lead. Very nice. Very, very helpful over here. Right? Take a look at this. Universal 25% speed lead. Great control. Pretty good for PvP. Not super important for the story clearing. So like the experts that I showcased at the start, those are going to be good. And yeah, let's just get our free legendary expert this way. <laughs> Ethan. Okay. Uh, I can't really complain. Another controller. And for the most part, he's kind of like a controller, but he also doubles as a buffer. So Yep, not bad. I think we have a pretty good start. So we have all the espers that we need to <laughs> to actually build this account to be really powerful. We have Clara, we have Ahmed, we have Ashley, <laughs> we have Ophelia, and we have a speed lead. We even have a... I totally forgot about this, but I have a, a Shimmer Legendary as well. I, I lucked out. And of course, I got Ethan. <laughs> so pretty cool stuff. My team is actually quite complete. Now, before we end off this video, I just want to give you guys a quick showcase on what my current team looks like so that you guys have an idea of just how it works at its current level. So let's just go ahead and do 10-1 and call it a day afterwards. So for 5 stamina, let's see how this team works and why this team is so powerful. And we are going to run this on perhaps full auto, right? I don't think I need to control. So the best part about this team is that I can just leave it to its own devices and I can just go, and go ahead and do my work and it's going to run this on auto and get 3 stars all the time which is perfect. So look at all the stuns that we have over here. Full team stun. And of course, a lot of DPS from uh, the Nether Bloom effect. Don't be too, like, don't think that this small little chunk of HP that we removed is not a lot of damage. This is still a lot of damage because the enemies here are level 116. So we are still dealing really good damage. And the reason for that is the Nether Bloom, which I will show you, uh, I'll show you the stats of their damage towards the end of this video so that you guys have an idea of like, just how actually powerful uh, Jiang Man is in this case. As you can see, right, completely hands-free. I'm not even interacting with this. In fact, I'm, I could just be busy doing any other thing in, in like my day, for example. So it's very easy for you to, to farm 350 summons if you follow these rules that I've set up for you. you use these aspects that I'm using. It's going to be very, very easy. And of course, if you do not have Clara, you can always get 100 Wish Stones, which you probably should have by now uh, at this stage, in order to buy her directly from the, the Wish Banner, right? There is a temporary Wish Banner. And that's it. So that's the end of this one run. Let's take a look at the damage spread over here. Right, as you can see, Diangman is dealing an insane amount of damage. She's dealing almost 50% of all the damage over here. So don't sleep on Diangman. She's very powerful. And the Black Team is also really good, but that just goes to show how powerful Diangman is. So like I said, if you do not have a Clara and you feel like you need to get a Clara, you can always go to the Wish Pool here and you can change your, your selected Wish Esper to whoever, right? So I do not have Clara over here because I already have a copy of Clara, so she's not in this list. But if you do have her in this list, then definitely select her as one of your starter choices. If not, if you're willing to wait, I will highly recommend you to go for Gaius, but you will require 10 Legendary Espers in order for you to unlock Gaius. But I think Gaius is probably going to be a little bit better than Clara in this regard because he is quite irreplaceable, but Clara is still quite replaceable because you have Espers like Changpu, you have Espers like Hengre. Anyway, that's it for this video. It drags on for a little bit too long. So this is the end of the newbie run through, a newbie guide, whatever you want to call it. Hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free To Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.